You can survive for weeks without water, but you can only survive for days. Hang on, I got that the wrong way around. <laughs> you can survive for weeks without food, but you can only survive for days without water. How many times have you guys heard that? So if you're going camping out of your vehicle, into the outback, into the bush, water is a pretty important part of your setup. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about jerry cans versus vehicle mounted water tanks. Which one is the right option for you? Let's get straight into it. So let's start with water tanks. Now they come in all different shapes and sizes out of all different kinds of materials, aluminium, stainless steel, plastics. It's all about finding the one that's gonna fit your setup the best. So this one here is a 55 litre water tank that I had custom made. And reason being is I just wanted as much volume as I could to fit in this area at the back of the canopy here. And it's just got this 12 volt pump here that pumps the water to the back tap on the car. Now, I never thought that I'd actually get a water tank. I didn't like a lot of things about them, but after having one, I don't know if I could ever go back to using just a jerry can. Anyway, let's talk about the pros and cons of a water tank. So by far the coolest thing about having a water tank with a water pump on it is how fast it is to get the water out. Like not that you're in a rush when you're camping, but still it's just super convenient. Now I always thought that having a pump, so it's a pressurized system, would mean that you go through a lot more water. But if you have a tab that's similar to this, it's actually pretty easy just to have a little trickle if you're trying to clean something or anything like that. Now another advantage that I find is that when you're in really hot environments, because it's a bigger body of water in one place, it takes a lot longer to heat up, which is a really cool thing because you don't really wanna be drinking lukewarm water. It's just not the nicest feeling. Now, another thing I have to say is that if you have a stainless steel tank or a high quality plastic tank, the water is gonna taste a lot better than out of a really cheap jerry can. Now, obviously it depends on the jerry can. There's some really good jerry cans out there too, but in general, I would say that the water is gonna be a lot better tasting. And having a water tank with a 12 volt pump on it is just like your normal water made at home. You can actually use it to wash things down. You can even water your lawn out here, you know, do whatever you wanna do. Now, I've actually found this to be really useful because I've recently purchased a boat and sometimes I'm in really random spots and there's nowhere to wash the boat down. So at least I can hook up the motor to the water, run the motor for a bit, get all the salt water out of it, things like that. So it's actually a really handy thing to do. Even if you get mud in your radiator or something, you're having issues like that, you could actually just run the hose to the front of the car and just wash all the mud out. So it's actually a pretty handy thing to have in some scenarios. Now I could actually come up with quite a few cons for having a water tank. So one of the biggest ones is that you can't actually get in there and physically clean the tank. So that's a little bit of a downside. You can buy products that you actually put into the tank, leave them in there for a while and then rinse them out. But while we're talking about this, the best thing to do if you're leaving a tank for a long time is to actually fill it up completely or have it completely empty with all of the bungs open. The reason for that is if you have a kind of half full, you're allowing air to be inside and then there's like all sorts of stuff growing in there that you don't really want. So best thing to do if you're leaving it for a long time unused is to keep it completely full or completely empty. If you're constantly cycling through the water, it's not really such a big deal. Now the second thing is that it's always on the car. So like most of us, you might be the kind of person that only goes camping every now and then. Now that means that no matter what you do with this car, besides that, shopping, you know, road, other road trips where you don't need water, all that kind of stuff, you always have the weight of the tank on the car. So that is another little bit of a downfall. Now, the other thing is that you always need a tap to fill up the water tank. You need to find a mains tap somewhere so that you have the pressure to fill it. You can't just scoop up the water from a stream or a lake, anything like that. One other alternative is to have another pump that you can actually use to pump the water into the tank. And then you can actually buy a filter system as well. So you could actually get the water from anywhere. So that is another option that you can look into, but it's extra stuff to carry again. Now, the other thing is the cost. Having a setup like this is gonna cost you a lot more, especially by the time you get a 12 volt pump and all that kind of thing. You could just use gravity to get the water out, but I don't know, if you're going to all the expense of having a tank fitted, you may as well get a 12 volt pump because it just makes life so much easier. 
One of the biggest problems with having a water tank, now depends how you look at it, how reliable the tank is, but is if anything happens to the tank, if it's punctured, if the welds crack, anything like that, you can lose all of your water in one hit. Now, if you're somewhere really, really remote, your water is your life source. So it can be a really big issue if that happens. So it's generally a good idea to carry at least an extra 20 liter jerry can somewhere else, completely separate, just in case something happens to your main tank. Water jerry cans, there's a stack of different varieties on the market. There's some 40 liter ones, there's some 10 liter ones, but the most common size is 20 liters. Now this one here is probably the best one that you can buy on the market. Really high quality plastic, no aftertaste at all. And the best thing about it is that the tap is actually recessed, which means that when it bumps around in the back of the car when you're forward driving, you can't actually damage the tap, which is very common if you leave the tap in these other ones here. Now, the thing is this one's about three times the price of these ones here. These Willow Jerry cans, they're pretty good. I've had one crack on me, so that is one thing to keep in mind. This one here, ProQuip, it's not too bad, but I always have leakage from here, which is pretty annoying. But let's talk about the pros of the 20 liter water jerry can. So one of the coolest things about these is how big the hole is. You can actually chuck a washcloth in there, chuck in some detergent in there, give it a good shake around, rinse it out a couple of times, let it air dry completely, and you're gonna have a nice clean jerry can for the next time you go camping. That is one of the biggest pluses about these jerry cans. Another cool thing is your water is spread out. It's not all in one spot. If one of these gets damaged, you've still got more. That is one really, really cool thing unless you just took one jerry can, I guess. <laughs> Another thing is that if you're not going camping, you can take them out of the car. They don't always have to be in the car. So you don't have that weight issue there as well. And the thing about jerry cans as well is these can be filled up from any water source. You don't have to find a tap with pressure in it to fill it up. You can fill it up at a lake, a stream, anything like that that you find in your travels. Now that's pretty handy because sometimes you just need some washing water. You don't always need to collect drinking water if you know what I mean. You can have one for drinking water, one for washing water, and that way this water can come from any water source that you come across in your travels. And uh, one other cool thing about these jerry cans is that you can actually see the water level. So you know how much water you're going through. Now that can be really critical if you're in a remote area and you need to keep an eye on it. Now, you don't want to limit how much you're drinking, obviously, because it's important to stay hydrated, but you can always use a bit less water for washing up and things like that if you know you're running low, unless you get a jerry can like this that you can't see through. And that is actually one other downfall of a water tank. Now, I've got a little gauge on mine so I can see the water level, but a lot of water tanks, you have nothing, so it's really hard to tell how much water you have left. Probably the most annoying thing about a jerry can is that for a lot of people, they have to keep them inside their car. So that means that every time you want water, you just wanna fill up your water bottle, you gotta pull it out, you wanna wash your hands, you gotta pull it out. Now, in another video called $15 Jerry Can Hack, I showed you guys how to make this. If you haven't seen that video, go and check it out. Super simple, all you do, plug that into your jerry can, and then you can just use gravity to get the water out without pulling out the jerry can every single time you wanna use it. Now, for some people, they keep them on a rear bar mounted at the back of the car or on their roof rack. Now, the thing is with jerry cans, no matter where you keep it, whether it's inside the car or on the back of the car on the roof, it's all affected by heat. Now, if you're traveling in really hot climates, that can be a really big issue because the water can just get so hot, especially if you have a really dark jerry can like this. These ones, a little bit better, but it's still gonna get really, really hot. And that's another downside of having a jerry can. Having a water tank under the car, it's a lot cooler, it's not in the sun. But if it's all you got, you gotta deal with it. You can always chuck the water in the fridge if you don't wanna drink it hot. Now this doesn't apply to all jerry cans and it's really hard to know what you're getting yourself into. Some jerry cans have a really bad aftertaste. Now a friend of mine bought a pretty expensive jerry can once and uh, he couldn't get the aftertaste out of it for ages. So it, it, you never really know what you're getting yourself into until you have the water tank in front of you and you taste the water out of it. But generally you'd think that the more you pay the better quality the plastic will be and the less aftertaste there will be but you never really know what you're going to get yourself into. 
And I guess the same goes for a water tank. If you get a really cheap water tank, you might have a bad aftertaste as well. It's really hard to say. For the majority of people that don't go camping all that often, you can't really go past the Humble Jerry can. I mean, they're simple, they're cheap, and they work. If you're planning a big trip and you're setting up your car for it, it might be worth looking into a water tank. I mean, personally, with the amount of traveling that I do, I don't know how I live without it. It just makes my life so much easier. And you wanna wash your hands, you wanna fill up your water bottle, it's just there, ready to go. Now that being said, on bigger trips, I still take water jerry cans quite often. Sometimes you need a little bit of extra water or you wanna carry it just in case anything happens to that. It's a good thing to have with you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video helped you guys. And don't forget to get out there and seek adventure.